Hello viewers, in this video I will talk about a novel and that is the life and opinions of Tristram Sandy Gentleman and it is written by uh, Lawrence Stern and he is an English writer. So this video will be little bit longer and it might be boring for you because this book, this novel has nine volumes and I will try to give you nine volume summary through this novel but please read the original text otherwise you will miss many things okay do, do not think that this video will be sufficient for you it will never be a sufficient please read the whole text okay now let me give you the summary of this text so now uh, the life and opinions of Tristram Sandy, gentleman, it is about the life of the fictional character called Tristram Sandy. And this is a psychological novel in which Tristram Sandy is the narrator. And this book is divided into nine volumes by Lawrence Stern, which is published between 1759 to 1767. And from the beginning of the novel, Tristram was very upset because of the interruption of his mother. Uh, during his conception by asking a question to his father that he had remembered to win the clock. Because Tristram Sandy believed that the moment of one's conception matters the most and it nurtures the mind, body and character of the child. Later, Tristram Sandy also introduces the reader to the other characters of the novel like his family, his family Walter Sandy and his uncle Toby Shady. And he has also presented the stories of his family history, his uncle Toby's affection for military fortifications in a disjointed manner and he has also talked about his uncle Toby's growing injury. Okay. Now, let's try to know about the uh, volumes of the novel, okay? Uh, so, from here it will start. So, uh, in the volume 1 of the text, Christian Sandy has proposed to tell his life story from the moment of his conception onward. He has blamed his parents for allowing themselves to be interrupted while they were conceiving him, thus leading to a life beset with many small misfortunes. Then he introduced his father, Walter Sandy, who was an uh, old country gentleman with hard opinions on a variety of seemingly trivial subjects. Okay. Then Walter's brother, uh, Uncle Toby, is depicted as a war veteran with a heart of gold, filling out the cast is uh, Parson Yori, who is a country priest whose wisecracking tendencies have made him many friends and a few powerful enemies. Okay. Then, after a brief struggle to tell his story without getting bogged down by digressions, Tristram Sandy threw in the towel, uh, sorry, threw the towel uh, and warned the reader to expect constant interruptions and side stories. And in his autobiography, Tristram uh, barely makes it as far as the day of his birth. Mrs. Sandy. Tristram's long-suffering mother intends to travel to London to bear her second child, but her husband overrules her and she ends up lying in at Sandy Hall. This basic narrative, however, is frequently submerged in a welter of background details related to Tristram's family members. Then, Walter, he also reveals that he is obsessed with the significance of names and would never have wanted his son to be named Tristram. How then does Tristram get his name? The narrator promises to re reveal all the detail in a later chapter. So, in the uh, volume 2 of the no novel, we got to know that Tristram offers a more detailed backstory for Uncle Toby, who has launched into an all-consuming study of military fortifications while recovering from a battlefield wound to his groin. And his own biography continues at a glacial pace with the man midwife. Then Dr. Slob being sent for when the bird seems like it will be a complicated one. Furthermore, Slob. Slob is a new character here who is described as a little squat uncourtly fellow who is among the new characters introduced in this volume. And also joining the uh, cast is Corporal Trim who was a former soldier who served as Uncle Toby's loyal valet. Okay? Then Slob is about to go upstairs and tend to Mrs. Sandy when he realizes that he has uh, forgotten his tools. Then they are retrieved just in time to bring the volume to an end. So this is about volume 2 of the novel. 
now in the volume three, uh, we we will get to know about ma many things. Uh, before Dr. Slop can go upstairs and deliver the baby, however, he must open his doctor's bag, which has been bound up in hopelessly complicated knots. Okay, and attempting to se sever the knots with a knife, he cuts his thumb and starts swearing in surprise and anger. Then S Susanna, the mid servant, runs downstairs to report that brings are uh, that things are not going well upstairs, and Dr. Stops agrees to come up and assist once he has tested out his forceps and his delivery technique on uncle toby's hands okay then the mock procedure leaves toby cut and bruised throwing dr slop's abilities into question but nonetheless the doctor goes up the bed chamber and the sandy brothers soon doze off in their armchairs then they are woken by corporal trim who had just finished turning a pair of old boots into motors for toby's mo model for uh, dr slop then he announces is that he is making a breeze in the kitchen not a model drawbridge as toby thinks and hopes but a device to prop up the baby's nose which has been crushed during childbirth okay then to walter this is disastrous news and he marches upstairs and flings himself into bed not saying a word then this apparent overreaction tristan says comes from walter's deep belief in the importance of having a long and sharply nose but though although uh, although the sandy men in general have placed a great importance on noses walter has taken it to a new extreme amassing tracks and treatises on noses in various language languages then tristan gives some highlights from his father's collection of nose literature promising a share a lengthier extra in volume and in volume four of the novel we got to know that the volume four uh, it uh, originally opens with uh, this is very hard to pronounce i may be i will actually pronounce wrong and i'm sorry for that please verify from it from other sources slok uh, slok and burguis tale so the volume open up with sloka Slok and Burgess tell, and it is a whimsical fable about a stranger with a long nose. And after this di digre after this digression, which is one of the novel's most extensive, the scene re returns to Sandy Hall, where Walter is gradually recovering from the news of his son's squash nose. Then, given his belief in the power of names, Walter proposes to make up for the baby's nasal na nasal deficiencies by giving him the name uh, Tris Tris Gistus. And as Walter and Toby attempt to make their way downstairs, Tristram continually interrupts the narrative to indulge in chapter length tangents on various topics. Eventually, he simply fast forwards to the e evenings, evening after his birth. Then all, however, is not yet well, but Su Susanna wakes Walter to let him know that the baby may not survive and should be baptized without delay. Then he tells her to convey his wish that the child be named uh, Tris. Magistus, but the name gets misheard as Tristram. Then the baby's uh, health improves, but Walter is deeply aggrieved when he learns his son has been misnamed. Consequently, he decided to seek Yorick's advice in this case about the baptism, and thus the name can be declared void. Then Yorick in invites him to a gathering of religious scholars where the matter will be debated, but after a long and largely irrelevant, meaningless discussion, this man declared the baptism valid. Then, disappointed, Walter threw himself into the new project of deciding how to spend an unexpected bequest from his aunt. Then he has enough money to send his older son Bobby to Europe or to improve a parcel of land on the Sandy estate. Then Bobby, who is a minor character who has scarcely been mentioned up to this point, dies suddenly, making the de decision an easy one. Then Tristram, for all his flaws in Walter's eyes, is now the family soul heir. Okay, so this is about four. Now let's try to know about five. Volume five of the novel. In the volume five, Walter copes with Bobby's death by making a long funeral speech, leaving Mrs. Sandry, Sandy to infer what has happened. Then Trim, meanwhile, gives a similar sermon to the household staff, hoping to salvage what is left of his legacy. Then Walter begins writing a work called the uh, Tristrapidia, intended to cover all the topics necessary for Tristram's education. But much like Trit Tristram Sandy itself, the book becomes an all-consuming undertaking, but Walter finds he cannot write fast enough to keep up with his son's growth and development. Then fast forwarding to age 5, Tristram describes a mishap, mishap in which he is circumcised by a falling sash window, window made of movable panels, and after consulting his li library, 
Walter took the news in stride, though he wondered what might be causing all these misfortunes to befall his son. Then he returned to his work on the Tristrapedia, sharing excerpt of his of the early chapters with un Uncle Toby, Parson Yorick, and Dr. Slob. And as might be expected given his op opinions on nurses, names, and childbirth, Walter has some peculiar thoughts about parenting and education as well. Then in the volume 6 of the novel, we got to know that when Walter seeks a tutor for the young Tristan, Toby man mentions young Billy Lay Fever as a candidate. Then this leads Tristram, Tristram to tell the sad tale of Lieutenant uh, Le Fever, uh, a dying soldier to whom Toby ministered in his last days of life. Then the Lieutenant's son, Billy, has been Toby's ward ever since, though he has recently gone off to serve as a soldier overseas and is just now expected to return to England. Meanwhile, Dr. Slop scandalizes the Sandy family by spreading rumors about Tristram's in injury greatly exaggerating the extent of the damage done. Done. Then Walter decides it is time to dress Tristram in breeches, the short trousers worn by older boys and men. And as is his habit, he agonizes over the style of breeches into order for his son and does much reading on this subject. Then in another extended flashback, Tristram has described or portrayed the last most glorious phase of Uncle Toby's model of fort building. As the war of the Spanish succession rages on overseas, Tom and Trim busily recreated one besieged city after another on their small plot of land. Then Trim even de devised a way of simulating siege artillery by blowing the smoke from a hookah through a series of tiny cannons. Then the war, however, ends with the Treaty of uh, Attracts leaving Toby without a ho hobby. Then little by little he starts courting his attractive neighbor, the widow Wedman. The other members of the Sandy family also suspect the two that they will marry shortly. Then in the seventh uh, volume of the novel, we got to know that before the reader, uh, we it is learned that uh, Uncle to Toby's love affair. However, the narrative lurches forward to the press present that is 1765 where Tristram now in, in his 40s is preparing to travel to France and the stated purpose of this voyage is to escape that who has tracked Tristram to his residence in England and is planning to pay him a visit any day. Then hurried onward by an awareness of his own mor mortality, Tristram rushed from one French city to another, barely stopping to record a few landmarks for the reader. Then he finds Paris impressively large but otherwise dreary, and none of the sights he wishes to see in the Lyons are open to the public. Then Tristram enjoys him himself much more in the rural south of the France, where he slows his pace enough to take part in fairs, festivals, and country dances. Okay, now let's try to know about the volume 8 of the novel. In the volume 8, we got to know that Tristram finally begins the story of Uncle Toby and widow uh, Wedman. The two first met, he says, just after Toby moved up from L London when he stayed in her guest room until his own house could be furnished. Then 11 years had passed, during which time the widow Wedman vacillated vacillated about whether to pursue a relationship with Toby or not. Then he meanwhile was too busy with his siege works to give love a second thought. Then he was spying on Toby from the hedges between their yards. Then Mrs. Wadman also occasionally visited Toby to flirt un under the pretext of asking about his fort building and past military exploits. Then back in the main, main timeline of the narrative, Toby and Trim continued dismantling their fort since the peace of Atres left them with no new battles to simulate. Then Mrs. Wadman, Wadman made a, a bolder advance upon Toby by pretending to have something in her eye and asking him to take a look. Then he was also struck by her beauty. He had also realized that he was in love. And as Toby prepared to pay Mrs. Wadman a visit, Walter had also offered his brother some character, some character Characteristically, uh, I'm sorry for the pronunciation. Long winded, long winded advice first in speech and then by a letter of instruction on conducting a love affair. Then the letter never gets read and the volume closes with Toby making his way to Mrs. Uh, Wardman's front door. Then in the uh, last volume, volume 9, we got to know that Toby Huey had dressed in poorly fitting Sunday best, marched up to Mrs. Wardman's with 
corporal trim along for moral support. Then he daunted by the task before him, he made an about face and marched back to the street. Then he was also summoned his courage and walked to her from door again. Then when Trim finally knocked Mrs. Wadman and her mate Bridget eagerly ad admitted their guest. Then Toby awkwardly confessed his love and proposed marriage within the space of a few minutes. Then Mrs. Wadman, however, was mainly concerned about Toby's war wound, which she feared ha had left him important. Then Toby happily answers her questions but failed to see the point of her inquiry. Then Bridget, meanwhile, piled a uh, trim for the same information with less delicateness and more success. Then, days later, Toby was re uh, reflecting on his ongoing courtship with Mrs. Wadman, who has been so concerned and alternate, uh, attentive about his own injuries. Then, Trim, uh, he was embarrassed, finally connected the dots for his employer, who was surprised and perhaps a little dismayed to learn the trust of Mrs. Wadman's many questions. Then, the two also visited Sandy Hall, where Walter and Mrs. Sandy were chatting with Yori and Dr. Slop. And in true, uh, Sandin fashioned the novel closed, uh, closes with an absurd uh, tangential story about a bull and a baby. So it is a very uh, kind of absurd novel. Okay.